So hello everyone, uh, Maxim here. So first of all, I'd like to thanks like the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative to help us doing like these bite-sized talks. Uh, today I'm introducing like uh, Rob Sign, a groovy wizard working like uh, at Sekera Labs, and he will explain us how to safely handle uh, metadata. And as usual, you'll be able to unmute yourself at the end of the talk to ask your question. Of course, you can also ask them like, on Slack or on the chat. And uh, over to you now, Rob. Perfect. Thanks for the intro, Maxim. So this talk is, um, as Maxim indicated, about safe metadata handling uh, in Nextflow pipelines. But really, it's all about pass safely passing any objects through um, pipe through channels in, in Nextflow. But it has particular application for the NF Core community here because we do a lot of metadata handling in NF Core, particularly passing around meta maps between processes and through channels. And there are some um, complicated um, little bugs that can occur when mutating those objects in place. And what I'm going to say, suggest to you, is that you should never mutate those objects in place, but instead always return new objects. Of course, this is a bit hard to explain um, in the abstract. So let's do an example. And this example is based on a true story. Sad story. <laughs> um, this, let's take this workflow. And we have a channel that takes an op that it produces an object or emits an object. And we're passing that channel to a buy new shirt process. This process does something very simple. Um, it just echoes um, the t-shirt size and based on the, the weight property in that object being passed to the process. So when we run this, um, we see the t-shirt side is small because the weight is 70 here, pass it to buy new shirt. So that's what we'd expect. No surprises here, nothing outrageously complicated. Yeah, these weights are in kilos, Phil. <laughs> um, so let's make this a little bit more complicated. I'm assuming that everyone has a pretty solid grasp of this. Let's add two new processes. The one we're going to be specifically interested in here is get new job. Um, and this get new job process takes an object, emits that same object, and modifies that object in place. So it adds fire to the weight property. Um, so we take that channel again, the same channel that we created before. We pass it once to buy new shirt and once to get new job. Like this um, runs uh, as expected. Uh, the t-shirt size is small. So everything is uh, sort of as we expect. Um, and I think the way that a lot of people think about these pipelines is it, like this. I think conceptually, a lot of us have this sort of picture in our head when we're writing these pipelines. We take an object, and we pass it to buy new shirt, and we pass it to get new job. Pass this object into those two channels into to new processes. And I think we we have a tendency to think about those as independent events, but really because this channel is taking the same object. That it's exactly the same object in memory getting passed to get new job and buy new shirt. So if get new job modifies the properties of that, it will affect buy new shirt. In this case, we saw it didn't affect the output of the run because this is dependent on timing. It's an important understanding to remember that all of these processes happen asynchronously, asynchronously in Nextflow. So we can offer no guarantees about the order of or the timing of this. To give this... To make um, it a little bit more clear, let's add in a little delay. So I'm gonna now going to add this browse process before buying your shirt. So this browse process, all it does is sleep for a couple of seconds, and that gives it time for the sort of, yeah, just delays before we buy the new shirt. Um, so now we've just added a process here, and ideally, I think a lot of people conceptually would think that adding a process here shouldn't affect the outcome here because we just pass the object through transparently. We don't do any modifications here, but but now because this process, this buy new shirt process, buy new shirt process happens after the get new job process, get new job process modifies the weight property and now buy new shirt is changed. So now the t-shirt size is a medium. I'll just give people a second to look at that, just digest it. So the, the sort of really core message that I want to get across here is that modifying the object 
um, modifies it across all paths in the DAG, the directed acyclic graph, the sort of graph of processes, um, which can lead to sort of complicated and time-dependent bugs. We were seeing some problems in NF core pipelines that would only appear if some processes took a little bit longer. And that's what I was trying to demonstrate with that browse process. They become really complicated, time-dependent bugs to track down. Okay, so that's what the problem is. Um, that, so what is the solution? And the solution is you should always return, or whenever possible, return a new object instead of modifying objects in place. And there's a couple of really, I'm just going to introduce two uh, very handy methods in Groovy for doing this. Uh, the sort of most common modifications we do in Metamap objects in NF Core. But the sort of the idea that you should always return new objects is the general solution for this problem. So this is what the process was before, the process that I showed you before that had the bug. So uh, modifying the property in place. But we can do this instead. So instead of returning the, the me object or the sort of meta object, that map object transparently, um, oh, there's a bug here that should be me and me. Um, what we do is we create a new object and we add these two together and return that new object. This um, will fix the bug. It's important to note here that this plus operator isn't is an alias for the dot plus method on maps in Groovy. And the dot plus f the dot plus method will return a new map with precedence being given to the map on the right. So this is the correct way. So yeah, so this dot plus method is really important. It's a way of sort of merging maps together in Groovy. This is what the Groovy doc looks like with the link to on the bottom. So it returns a new map containing all the entries from the left and right, giving precedence to the right. And that giving precedence to the right is important because it allows us to overwrite properties by price, placing them on the map on the right-hand side of the plus operator. And critically, the return object is a new map containing all the entries from the left and right. Similarly, the same sort of problem happens um, inside of map blocks or map closures. So this is actually the more common case in the NF core pipelines. Um, what we're doing here is we're making a, a, the same object, a map of two keys, name and weight. And here I'm overriding the weight property or the weight key in this map by adding a new map. And this will return a new map um, and make it clean for downstream use. In addition to override, using this plus operator to override properties in this map, I can always also use it to override properties and add new properties. So here I'm adding a new key, the employer key. And as Max Team said, it works at Secure Labs, um, in addition to overriding the property. So it's a really nice way of piecing together and adding and overriding maps uh, in Nextflow pipelines. The sort of inverses operation you might think of is subtracting keys. This is also something that needs to happen quite a lot in NF core pipelines where you want to take a subset of the keys. Rather than defining a new map, you can use this submap method. Uh, the submap method takes a collection of keys and returns a new map just containing those keys. So here we have a, a very verbose map first name, last name, location, age, and employer. And let's say for downstream processes, I really only need first name and location. I can use this submap method, which does return a new object, doesn't modify the object in place, it returns a new object. Um, you can see here in the return value in the documentation, um, in the Groovy doc. So that will be safe uh, for modification. Uh, some examples. One complicated example in the wild here was from um, the SARIC pipeline. This was a really tricky bug to spot. It has actually been, is now absolutely fixed in, in SARIC and is also fixed on the next flow side. But here we were taking the output of the fast P process and we were taking the meta and the reads and we were calling the dot sort method on the reads. Now this is a dangerous operation because dot sort actually modifies the object in place. It sorts the object in place. Even though we're returning um, uh, we're assigning it to a new value here. Dot sort actually modifies reads, which had complicated 
um, uh, implications for the publishing of those files. So that's what you want to avoid. But for the most part, 99% of cases can be avoided by simply using the dot plus method on map objects or the dot submap method on objects for expanding and contracting metamap methods, metamap objects in NF core pipelines. So today's talk is very simple, just has this one clear message, never modify anything in place and instead always return new objects when passing objects through uh, NF core and Nextflow pipelines. Have there any questions about um, about that? I also have an, a VS code and we can go through examples interactively if people have more questions. Uh, thank you very much, Rob. That was like amazing. And uh, yes, uh, I'm hoping people, uh, is, does anyone have any question here? Uh -huh. I know it's always oh. a question. Uh, let's go for it. <laughs> Uh, this is super insightful, and I am sure I've written a lot of code which falls into these traps. Um, how can we spot them? How can we spot these bugs? It's it's almost always. Um, oops, uh, let me just share my screen again. It's almost always this dot um, this dot notation for for modifying, but you can actually. Uh, let me share my screen again. You can uh, force force it to be a little bit more clear. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to share my screen because <laughs> I don't have I don't have an example of that. But you can force it. So we could do one of two things um, in NF Core pipelines. We could instead of passing a map object, we could develop our own class um, that inherits from map and simply make it immutable. Um, that would sort of force things to um, it wouldn't compile it would um, or not compile it wouldn't run when you try to assign um, objects try to modify it in place that's one object that's one path um, that's a sort of more secure path um, but it does make things a little less uh, convenient <laughs> because there are sometimes yeah when sort of creating an object where it's nice but that that's that might be one and I'm sort of toying around with what it would take to to do that because I think it might be possible just to define a class in the lib directory, like a new metamap.groovy, um, change one sort of invocation at the start of the pipeline and leave everything else unchanged. So so that might be the way we end up going. But I'm uh, willing to like give it a go and just see what people think. I, I don't know how aware people are of the project, but I've just come off a call with, um, with uh, Matthias and Julia. And we were talking about the NF validation plugin, which, which Julia and Nicholas are writing which has got a sample sheet, a new a new channel factory for generating a channel output from a sample sheet. That's where the meta map is most likely going to be created, right? At the point yep. where we're passing the sample sheet. So it could be something we could do within that Nextflow plugin. And yeah. then, then all the stuff, we don't have to touch the lib directory within a pipeline or anything. We could we could generate and define that class within the, the Nextflow plugin and hide it out of sight. Yeah, yeah, that, that's perfect. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, it's a great idea. Uh, Tizias had a question about like what was the best way to drop like just one key from the meta map. Uh, um, My suggestion was like to use minus and then uh, sub map with just that one key. Yep, that's yep, that's one option. Or you can pass in um, one up, another option would be uh, dot sub map and then it dot keys minus the key that you don't want. So that sub map will take a collection of any kind. And if you take a map and call the dot keys method, that returns a set of all the keys. So you could subtract the key you don't want from that set and pass that it dot keys uh, minus the key you don't want. But also the the way that you've described there, Maxime, is also perfectly fine. I think there'd be about the same number of characters anyway. So personal preference. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there isn't like a specific method for removing a key. But if we did create our own class, we could make our own method to remove a key. So that might, yes, that but might I be think like I think creating like our own class will be like something for another byte size. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so okay. uh, Sorry, I was say, is, this, is there a good source of documentation to read up on this anywhere? 
Um, this idea is a little bit next slow based, so no, <laughs> but, um, the groovy documents, the, the groovy docs, um, that I linked in the slide, um, and I'll pass a, a, a link, I'll pass a link on the Slack, um, are the best place for groovy docs. One do there's, I've forgotten who it was now, is it the midnight sort of dark, so, someone, someone in the community's built a website, like a make duck materials website with like. Uh, common pitfalls and things for next time. I wonder if it'd be a good one to go into that site. Oh yeah, I, I can suggest it out of there. Apologies, That's whoever it is. One. I'm sure I'll be corrected in a second. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Moritz, Moritz Fieber. Um, oh, yeah. But also, we've we've got some of this stuff in the advanced training docs, right? Rob Sign. Yeah, yeah. This is this is um like a, a module in the advanced training. So yeah, we'll end up in um training dot or training dot <laughs> So I, I guess I had a question. So if you did want to sort um say reads as part of an operation for whatever reason without actually appending or taking away from the map what what's the safest way then to just create a new copy would you use dot clone would you would you reassign it i mean if is reassigning safe so if i have because it is it just a pointer in memory then where you would be updating the original map anyway you could just say new map is equal to old map for example um, you can use, you can, or it's, it requires, it's a really simple fix. Um, all it requires is in dot sort, you pass it a true um, as the first argument, and that will sort it. Instead of sorting in place, we'll return a new object, and then you can reassign it. But so, is yeah. in memory? Um, I'm not sure what you, know, what you mean. So if you, if, you re if you create a new map, so this this can be an issue in some programming languages where you you have an original map, right? So old map, and say you want to create an, a copy of it, you'd say new map is equal to old map, right? And then you do all of your downstream operations on new map. That's still change old map in place because it's just a pointer in memory to the old map. See what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So if you pass dot sort uh, true. It will return a new map. So the new map is a new object. The the elements of the map will still be pointed to the same original copies, but that's okay because the um uh, the, it's the order that you want to change. And so you'll get a new map, um, and that object will have a new address in memory. Okay, uh, I think we have like some more time. Does anyone have any any more question? Oh, Rike has just said she didn't know about exact. So that exact method that I used, I used as a convenient method. The important thing to know about exact is that happens on the next floor head node um, rather than being farmed out to a, um, a a process, which can be useful because particularly if you're operating in the cloud, you don't have to wait for VM speed ups. Also good for demos like this because you can just write arbitrary groovy. Right. It's not it's not that helpful. It's like in Mexico pipelines, more, more often than not, you don't need it. Sorry, Phil. I was going to say, we I usually am used to going as far as saying don't use it because if you, it's quite easy to abuse it and then like crash the main next way job or take down the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good for demos and maybe not um, best practice. <laughs> Okay, then uh, I think we are good. So I will stop the recording.